So last time I got out a couple of old floppy disks, got out my drives and my grease weasel, read them in, and converted them into usable formats. And we did look at this uh, directory listing last time, but uh, this time we want to actually take a look at what we have in here. So if we take a look at this, there's some basic programs. I actually wrote, had written my own uh, typesetting system, which used the uh, McPaint fonts, and uh, that's how I how I generated the text pages for my desktop publishing system. Yeah, you see these these here standard future bold script. These are actually fonts that uh, came from uh, McPaint. But what we're actually going to talk about today is what's on these two disks here: this newspaper int disk and this newspaper pick disk. So before I get into what's on these two disks, I'm going to explain how my desktop publishing system actually works. As you may know, the TRS-80 Coco 1 and 2 graphics screen is uh, two colors, and you have four colors if you do artifacting, but normally it's only two colors. And the resolution, the full resolution, is 256 by 192. So what I did in my desktop publishing system is I actually took eight different screens and I wrote some programs to combine eight different screens to put them onto one bigger page. And the resolution of that bigger page is, I can't figure out exactly what it is, I don't think it's exactly uh, 512 by 768, but it's something like this. It's something like two screens across, and I think it's uh, three and a half screens uh, down is actually, uh, actually how it works out. So, yeah, going back to the listing here, the reason why the second disk is interesting is if you look at this, you can see that there are some files here with a date that are numbered one through looks like one through six. And then there's a couple of other couple of other files here. So we're actually going to jump over to MAME running Coco emulation and take a look at these. Okay, so I have my emulated Coco here. Let's just pop these disks into the drive. Uh, we wanted the one called uh, pick2. Okay, so we're looking for newspaper pick2 disk and we want the image file here and I'm going to do it uh, read only. So as we saw when we do a directory listing of this disk, there's a bunch of bin files here. Now, these bin files are actually exports. They're exported from MicPaint. In MicPaint, you can export images in a couple different formats, including a bin file. So if you have a bin file, there's actually one thing, the interesting thing that you can do with it. You can load the bin file straight into the computer, and you actually don't need a viewer program. So let's just do that. Let's take a look at the first one. So I'm going to load the first one in P1. Whoops. Okay. P1 89.11.24. So that's going to load this file into memory. And it turns out that when McPaint exports these, it does it the bin file that it generates actually loads into the graphics memory of the of the machine. So to view it, we have to do something like this. Screen 1, 1, 20p mode 4, 1, and then 30 go to 30. And if we run this, we should see what the screen actually looks like. 
So this is actually one page. Yes, I made it actually made this in McPaint on November. I didn't make it in McPaint. I actually used um, my own typesetting program to make this. I had a, a basic and assembly language program that read a text file and generated a, a bin file. It actually looked up all the letters in the fonts. It wrote them all out in, in a table. So um, I had my did my own typesetting. So dear friends, this is the new format Furman Gazette. I've personally worked for many days to prepare the first version of this publication, etc, etc. Cool. Let's load another one. Let's see what this one looks like. Okay, so as you see, this is an older one. We were in November before. This is back in July. And uh, we actually had a copy of Graphicom. So I had made this one, and you can see the uh, artifacting going on here. So, yeah, you can see the Gafcom uh, Cheshire Cat does uh, smiley there. Okay, let's load one more. Ah. Oh. So this one looks like it's a header, but you get the idea. I have a disk here with a bunch of different pages in it. Okay, now we're going to look at a different disk. This other disk, if you remember, I said that what we actually do is we took the screens that we just looked at that are on this newspaper pick disk too, we took those screens and we combined them to make a bigger one. Now you see that this file here, page in two, this thing is actually huge. It's really big. And so this is actually the file that contains all eight screens or 7.5 screens that are all put together. Okay. Well, there actually isn't a way that we can view that directly on the Coco. If we use a big computer, you know, what can we do? Essentially, what this is, is this is a huge bitmap, right? It's just a bunch of pixels, ones and zeros that represent places, you know, uh, as we saw the images, right? So this, this out file here, is an even bigger bitmap. So how are we actually going to view this? I'm back here on my Mac here, and I'm using Toolshed to look at this disk image. I can copy out the file directly. Directly copy, then the disk image and a comma page dot in two and copy that to page dot in two. So I have I have the file here. We can take a look at it and as a hex dump, but this is just just kind of looks like random binary data. And this is the actual bitmap. These are actually the the pictures that we want to look at. So this is not in format that can be understood on on Windows or you know I'm on my Mac here. My Mac doesn't understand this. So I thought about it a little bit. What can I do with this file? How can I convert it to something that it would understand? Well, I did a little bit of research and the simplest, the absolute simplest image format that I could really see, right, just make a little change here, uh, is called the actual, the, the simplest image format I could find that had required the least amount of work to actually get going 
was called an XBM file. And so I wrote a little tiny, this little tiny Python script. It's not very big. Um, it just, and I can go through what it does. It basically opens the reading file, opens the writing file, it writes a header. And then basically this loop here goes through the source file and it basically writes it all out in hex. And that's, that's what an XBM file looks like. So I just ran Python 3 raw to XPM and I put the name of the file. And basically it created a page.xpm. So again, the Mac can't really open the XPM file, but I can convert page.xpm into page.png, let's say. And if I do open page.png, we can actually look at it. So here's the image file that we actually got. It looks kind of like a newspaper -y thing, but if you notice, there's something really strange about it. Um, the, the place where you can really tell is if you just look at, like, this is supposed to say the Furman Gazette. And if you look at this, that E looks backwards and the F looks backwards and the R looks backwards and the N, you know, all of the letters look, all of, you know, the letters, this is supposed to be the word November. So the letters are in the correct order, but actually all of the pixels are flipped around. So what this means is that the bytes are in the correct order, but actually the bits are need to be reversed. So I went back to my Python program and I figured out how to reverse the bits. I reran the Python program again and then redid the redid the conversion. And then once I do that, wow. Here we go. This is actually what my little newspaper looks like. There we go. So I recovered my little newspaper from November 1989 off of a random floppy disk. So you can actually see that this is a, I can make it a little smaller and then you can actually see that there are, um, you can actually see the tiles here. So. These are two different tiles. These are two different tiles. These are two different tiles. These are two different tiles here. But wow, pretty cool, huh? I actually recovered some work that I did when I was 13 years old in 1989. The Furman Gazette. I'll include a link uh, to download uh, this newspaper if you wish to take a look at it. All right. So I think that's enough for this episode. I will see you guys again in my next Septendi blog. Bye everyone.